McNeil starts right now. In Pleasanton, authorities finally made entry to the home where a suspect barricaded himself since last night. The discovery and how this standoff ended just ahead on GMSA. A lot of our local school districts are starting classes this coming week. We check in with the Somerset ISD superintendent to talk about preparations and expectations for the coming semester. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, a picturesque moment to start your Sunday morning. 71 degrees, the sun is out. It's going to be a great day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey to see what the forecast looks like today and what it looks like for the rest of the week. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Acosta. It is Sunday, August 23rd. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning. And I loved that sunshine yes. out there. The sun is out. We had rain yesterday. It's going to be a great day. So Sarah, what can we expect for the rest of it? Yeah, almost complete weather from 24 hours ago where we were dealing with rain around San Antonio yesterday morning. Not complaining. We needed that rainfall, uh, but it is nice and comfortable outside right now. In fact, temperatures dip down to 69 degrees at the airport. That's the coolest we've been since June 14th, so in two months. Pretty awesome. Outside right now, it is mostly sunny, 71 degrees, and we do have relatively low dew points for the start of the day. Dew points in the upper 60s. Today we can see really comfortable weather with dew points falling into the 50s by the afternoon. And it is nice outside right now. 70 at JBSA Randolph, 64 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 66 in Bandera, 64 in Kerrville, 62 in Comfort, 72 in Canyon Lake, and 73 in New Braunfels. But it is going to get warm today, as it always does in the summer months. We'll be at 81 around 10, 88 at noon, 90 for the afternoon high temperature. Not that bad when you consider that 96 as our average high temperature and we have been hot just about every day of August so far with the exception of yesterday. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now we've got a lot to unpack in the forecast including an update on both Tropical Storm Marco and Tropical Storm Laura coming up in a bit. Thank you Sarah. Gunshots at a home in Pleasanton end with an hours long standoff between police and the suspect. Police say the situation was a violent one that happened around 7 o'clock last night. Our Alicia Beretta is live downtown with the latest. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, this incident involves a married couple, and police say this all began with an argument that led to a domestic violence incident and then shots fired. According to police, the, the target of those shots fired was the wife. We know several rounds were fired, but that domestic violence victim became a survivor as she was able to make it out without any gunshot wounds. For hours, authorities remained at the scene to try to reason with the man and get him to surrender. However, that wasn't the case. Out of precaution, the neighborhood was surrounded by numerous officers and several other streets had to be blocked off until early this morning. However, the suspect never cooperated with police. Chief Sanchez says the suspect never even responded, and hours later, they were able to locate the suspect. However, that suspect was already dead. In the next half hour, we'll hear directly from Chief Sanchez on more of the details of how they made this dis discovery and who they, what other agencies they worked with. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. New this morning, one man is behind bars after Bear County deputies say they were led on a late night chase. Deputies say they attempted to pull over a driver at Jones Falls and Misty Springs Drive after he ran a stop sign around 1030 last night. The driver then led them on a high speed chase through several neighborhoods until he crashed on Cherry Road and I-35. Deputies tell us the driver was arrested after being checked out by EMS and smelled of alcohol. Allegedly, he faces charges of evading arrest and a possible DWI. Now to the latest of COVID-19 numbers here at home here in Bear County. 137 more people testing positive. That's in addition to an extra 205 backlogged positive cases from Walgreens. This brings us to a total of 45,156 positive cases since March. 14 more people have died because of COVID-19. Our total death toll here in Bear County, 712. 482 people still in the hospital, 213 in the ICU, 144 on ventilators. City officials say the Texas Department of Health and Services confirmed those backlog numbers are a result of coding errors from last week. Of the 59,000 test results, 205 positive results belong to Bear County. It breaks down to 32 from June, 163 from July, and 10 from August. 
Meanwhile, another tragic milestone passed. More than 800,000 people from around the world have died because of this pandemic. The United States remains the country with the highest death toll. More than 175,000 people died here in the United States. And for a lot of students and families in and around San Antonio, this is the last weekend of summer vacation. Several districts starting class this coming week. One of them, Somerset ISD. In today's leading essay segment, Somerset ISD Superintendent Dr. Saul Hinojosa joins us live. Good morning, Dr. Hinojosa. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. So right off the bat, basic question, what is the initial plan for your district as classes are set to begin this week? Well, of course, we are starting tomorrow 100% virtually. We're going to do that for the first two weeks, and uh, we anticipate bringing students back into our classrooms after Labor Day on September the 8th. And Superintendent, what are some of the unique challenges Somerset families face? Well, being that we're in a somewhat rural area, connectivity is a big issue. We do have areas uh, in our district where people don't have access to Internet, so the district has a uh, uh, passed an initiative to issue students hotspots, but there's still areas where even though we uh, issue a hotspot that students still cannot uh, access the internet. Now, you talk about the hotspots, we talk about the digital divide a lot. What are you making, how are you making sure that some of the students in your district, some of the families who don't have those hotspots or maybe don't have laptops, how are you making sure they don't fall between the cracks? We've set up task force at each campus, uh, a group of four to five individuals, and their uh, uh, solo task is to go make home visits. Uh, we've uh, been out knocking on doors uh, for those parents that we can't get a hold of. So we want to make sure that we reach that we reach every student. As of uh, Friday, I believe we've touched about 96% of our families. So we're, we're going to, starting Monday, we're going to go try to find that other 4%. And Superintendent, what other preparations has the district had to make this upcoming semester? Well, we, we're, we're blessed to have some great teachers in our district. For the last two weeks, they've been preparing. They've been preparing how to use these learning platforms that we're going to be offering our students. You know, we, we have a, a, a great contrast. You know, some of our uh, teachers, of course, are uh, they're, they're they know uh, technology and uh, so some of our others are just learning. So we wanna make sure that uh, we collaborate to make sure all our teachers are able to uh, teach uh, digitally to all our students. Like many other districts, you guys are planning to head back to the classroom after Labor Day. What precautions are in place for when students do return to the class? Well, we, we've taken every safety measure that we can think of. We want uh, parents to know that when they do send their students uh, to our campuses, that they're going to be safe. And uh, we're here to support them, whether they uh, uh, choose uh, virtual instruction or face-to-face -face instruction. Uh, we're going to offer a quality education for all of our students. And before we go, Superintendent, you know, what would be your overall message to the Somerset community? I know a lot of people are nervous. There's a, every, every day is a different change. So what would you tell them? Yeah, we're, we're, we're here to support them. We're here to uh, make sure that they get a quality education. We've had a lot of success over the last uh, few years. Uh, you know, we've built trust in our community and uh, we're going to continue to work together to make sure that students get a quality education in our district. All right, Superintendent, thank you so much for your time this morning. Good luck with the coming semester. Thank you. Time now, 808, 71 degrees out. And... We have football. I know there's a lot of questions amid this pandemic, but right now training camps across the NFL are underway. That includes two here in Texas. We have the Houston Texans, the new look Houston Texans, and the Cowboys. We're going to take a look at their first round wide receiver who is already turning heads. Okay, we've talked about murder hornets, uh. Uh, hornets a lot, a lot. Okay, but now there's killer wasps. What is going on in the world? <laughs> Happy 2020. I know. After the break, we talk, we take a look, look at these new insects that are making their way, yes, into Texas. Right. The murder hornets were just in Washington, so that wasn't too much of a concern. I'm not happy about that. Uh, just sit, sit back, though. Enjoy 71 degrees. We got the sun. It's a great Sunday morning. We still have another 50 minutes of the news to tell you about. We'll be right back. Well, if you thought 2020 couldn't get more in our way, think again. Now, instead of murder hornets, there are cicada killer wasps, or how we say here in South Texas, chichada. 
killer wasp, but don't worry, they actually don't mean any harm to us. Hmm. This native insect paralyzes chichadas with their stings and then drags them to their nest for their larva to eat. They may look big and intimidating. <laughs> oh my gosh. But they actually rarely are aggressive toward humans. Rarely, so there's a chance. Oh, Max. <laughs> Not only are they on the move here in Texas, but they can grow up to an inch and a half long. The female wasps capable of stinging, but are rarely aggressive. However, the men are not able to sting, but are known to be more aggressive towards humans and other animals. This is all according to wildlife officials. The Chichata killers nest in sandy areas and dig burrows about six inches deep and are most active during July and August right. when those Chichatas appear, the field guide says. Huh. I don't care. Even if I know they won't sting me, they're still terrifying. They're pretty terrifying. An inch and a half. That's pretty big. All right. And next we are talking about the tropical storm in preparation of everything. We're actually going to let Sarah Spivey talk about this. Yes. Okay, so Marco is not expected to hit the Texas coast. Mm. Don't have to worry about Marco hitting the Texas coast, but it did look like it a little bit uh, over the past couple of days. We've had some developments here, and so be out of an abundance of caution, uh, Padre Island decided, the seashore decided to close down. But Marco is expected to actually hit Louisiana. Mm. Now, when it comes to Laura, that could end up making landfall anywhere from Houston all the way out to Louisiana coast as well. So we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast pretty much. Uh, now, uh, a look outside. It is nice and sunny outside right now. Uh, temperatures are warming up, although we started off in the upper 60s. So. The upper 60s was how low we got this morning. That is the coolest we have been since June 14th, which is good news. 71 degrees outside for the temperature right now. So we're already warming up with just an hour or so of sun sh sunshine. It's 64 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 66 in Bandera, 69 in Tarpley, 71 in Hondo, 67 in Bulverde, and 73 in New Braunfels. Today, it's going to be totally sunny for most of the day, but in the afternoon we could see a few clouds and uh, maybe one or two coastal showers may make it to that I-35 corridor between New Braunfels and Austin. Here in San Antonio, though, we will stay dry, and if you do live in New Braunfels, Seguin, closer to Austin, you're more than likely going to stay dry as well today. Thankfully, afternoon high temperature is going to be a little bit more tolerable at 94 for the high temperature today. Yesterday, we only got up to 90 degrees because of yesterday's rain. I hope you got some good rain. There was good rain that fell generally east of I-10 and I-35. Some places got up to two inches of rainfall. However, today, no real rain in the forecast and it'll still be hot out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass. High temperatures going to be near the triple digit. Thankfully, dew points are going to be comfortable in the afternoon. We won't have to worry about a heat index value. Uh, dew points are going to fall into the 50s, which is good news, and uh, we won't have to deal with a heat index. We'll be at 80 at 10, 88 at noon, 94 uh, for the afternoon high temperature. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. A coastal shower or two could be possible, as I've mentioned, but don't bank on the rain today. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. By the way, our average high temperature, 96. So if we don't hit 96 today, this will be the second day in a row for the entire month of August that we have been below the average high temperature. It should be a really pleasant evening. Let me go into more detail about the tropics. Now earlier it was looking like Marco could potentially make landfall anywhere along the Texas coast, but because Marco has rapidly strengthened, it's almost a hurricane. Its track is going to be a little bit closer to the Louisiana coast, and I'll show you that in a moment. Meanwhile, Tropical Storm Laura also expected to strengthen and eventually make its way into the Gulf of Mexico. Let's first talk about Marco. Here's the track for Marco. Expected to make landfall in Louisiana uh, by about Monday afternoon, potentially as a category one hurricane. Uh, so that's why areas like New Orleans are under a hurricane warning. Uh, thankfully, Marco not going to be anywhere near the Texas coast. Uh, we'll 
be seeing dry air behind that. Usually on the west side of these systems, we get dry air, so it'll actually be dry in San Antonio and potentially hot as well. Laura's future remains a little bit more uncertain. It is expected to strengthen potentially up to a Category 2 hurricane, but notice it could make landfall anywhere from Houston and Galveston area all the way out to Louisiana. That would be, if that happens, if Laura makes landfall on Louisiana coast, that would be two landfalling hurricanes within days for the Louisiana coast, which is not great. But Laura is expected to make landfall at some point late Wednesday into Thursday morning. Now notice this dry air behind that storm as well. So when all is said and done here in San Antonio, we're not going to see any direct impacts from both of these systems. Instead, It'll be hot, it'll be dry. High temperatures are going to climb to about 100, 101 Thursday through Saturday. And as far as rain chances go with Laura, we could get one or two isolated showers and storms on those outer bands. But again, as we get closer to those dates, we're going to have a much narrower view of where Laura will land and we'll be able to refine that forecast there. Boom, back to the triple digits. So take advantage of this <laughs> afternoon. Time now, 819, 71 degrees out. We'll still ahead. TikTok says it will fight the Trump administration in court. Details on when the company could begin taking legal action. Mm. Are you on TikTok? No. Uh. I'm not that cool. Yeah, I'd say trendy, but whatever. And he is worth the hype. That's what Tony Pollard has to say about one of the newest players at Cowboys training camp. We're going to tell you who he is and why you should be excited if you're a Cowboys fan. Good morning and welcome back in the sports world today. A lot going on, including talking about the Spurs. San Antonio may not be in the playoffs, but they're already working to get better for next season. Derek White undergoing surgery from an injury that may have happened before his standout play in the bubble. Remember, he was killing it in the bubble. Derek, though, dislocated second toe on his left foot. We're going to be very specific today. He is expected to be ready by the start of next season. Remember, the offseason a lot shorter this year because of the pandemic. A lot of fans, though, hanging their heads because the Spurs didn't make the postseason. Put that head up, chin up. We got a lot to be excited about. Derek White, a crucial part of the future of the franchise. Lonnie Walker, young, exciting, can dunk on everybody. Keldon Johnson, only a rookie. He showed out and showed up in the bubble. And DeJounte Murray, a long 6'6 guard. There he was. Look at that. Derek White, very impressive. Don't forget the name. And we are in August, even though we have this pandemic. We still have football. Cowboys first round pick, CeeDee Lamb. You probably watched him a little bit in college. Very impressive. And he is not just impressing me. He is impressing everyone at training camp, as, you know, a first round pick is expected to do. The former All-American wide receiver from Oklahoma getting a lot of praise from running back Tony Pollard, saying he's worth the hype. Meanwhile, Amari Cooper, he better put his money where his mouth is because as far as the Cowboys next season, he says that there could be three 1,000-yard receivers. But right now, Lamb is just focusing on adapting to the faster pace of the NFL. And the Houston Texans, we can't talk football in Texas without the Texans. Deshaun Watson entering his fourth season in the league with the Texans. During his tenure, the Texans have a phenomenal record, 24-13 and 13 in the regular season. Postseason record, not that great, just one and two. Remember, they got beat by the Super Bowl winning Kansas City Chiefs last year. But Watson is used to winning at every level. He had a state championship in Georgia. Then, remember, he beat Alabama when he was at Clemson in college. But now winning a Super Bowl is the top priority. Deshaun says small steps can make a big difference in terms of, you know, that pursuit of winning a Super Bowl. And it all begins with the mental mistakes, getting rid of them, and don't forget, both teams looking a lot different this year. Amari Cooper had said 3,000-yard receivers. That's big for Dak Prescott looking for another contract. I'm just going to go off on a rant. They told me I got a lot of time. Go for it. The Texans, they are a new-look team because, remember, they got rid of DeAndre Hopkins. He is now in the Cardinals. They also brought in Brandon Cooks and new running back David Johnson. Are you a Texans or Cowboys fan? No, I'm not answering that. Oh, okay. I'm a football <laughs> fan. There you go. 825, 71 degrees out. Well, coming up in our next half hour, the cast of the new Suicide Squad film has been announced. We'll tell you who is making it to the big screen. Plus, the latest out of California and how firefighters doing their best trying to extinguish the fire that are ravaging the state. We'll be right back. 
Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, August 23rd. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Max, do you have any plans for this afternoon? Um, you know, I have to make it outside. Yesterday was the perfect lazy Saturday. You, though, bringing the sunshine into the newsroom. You know, it's it, well, the sun is now back out. Look, we have sun. We have Sarah Costa. We have Sarah Spivey. We're calling ourselves Sarah Squared. Yeah. Hey, Max, okay. It's going to be a new thing. <laughs> Max We're going to have Sarah. koozies with our names on them. Ooh, okay. Sarah Fanny Squared. packs. Let's Fanny do it. packs. I was going to say it's like a new GMSA band. It is like a new Max GMSA and the Sarah band. Squared. Sounds good. <laughs> Max and the Sarahs. There you go. Now, good news. The aquifer really responded well to yesterday's rain. The aquifer is actually up more than a foot in the past 24 hours. That 10 day average is also going up as well, but we are still under stage one water restrictions. More good news feels great outside. Temperatures dip down into the 60s in San Antonio for the first time since June. That's impressive. 68 in Bandera, 66 at uh, in Kerrville, 63 in Comfort, 73 in New Braunfels, and 72 in Stinson. Now looking ahead to the forecast, it's going to be a beautiful Sunday. It is going to get warm in the afternoon. It's summer after all. 94 for the high temperature, but the average high is 96. So we're going to be cooler than average for only the second day in this month. The other day, yesterday, when we got up to 90. Now, east winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And yeah, there could be a coastal shower or two, but we've got a lot to talk about in the tropics as well. I'll be back with a look ahead coming up. Thank you, Sarah. In Pleasanton, a man tries to shoot his wife and then refused to speak for, to police for hours overnight. Authorities tried to peacefully negotiate with that suspect after he locked himself inside his home. The standoff began around 7 last night and, and just a few hours ago. Alicia Barrett joining us live downtown with the latest. Alicia, you tell us we now know one person is dead. That's right, and things ended fatally after that suspect turned the gun on himself. Police made the discovery early this morning around three that that man was dead inside his home. And this all started around seven last night in Pleasanton when police got a call for shots fired at the location of this home. Pleasanton Chief of Police Ronald Sanchez says the couple's home isn't far from Oaklawn Road. And it started with a domestic dispute that escalated to violent moments. And here's what Chief Sanchez had to say what happened overnight. The husband discharged a firearm several times towards the wife. She was not hit. Uh, no one was shot. Uh, no other people were shot. Uh, he barricaded himself in the home. We had a standoff uh, for several hours. Uh, San Antonio Police Department, a, a SWAT team and their hostage negotiation team came out along with Texas Department of Public Safety and the Texas Rangers. Eventually, the decision to enter the mobile home was made only to discover again that that suspect was dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. That suspect's name and age has not been released just yet. But again, police are still investigating exactly what led up to this. And again, um, the the target of those gunshots at the beginning was the wife. But again, she was able to make it out of the home without any gunshot wounds. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. New this morning, police still searching for who's responsible for stabbing a man just north of downtown. Take a look. All this happening just before midnight. Evergreen and McCullough Avenue. Police telling us a woman was with a group of men at a home on Ever Evergreen. The woman then called her boyfriend to pick her up. That's when police tell us one of the men she was with stabbed the boyfriend in the leg. The woman and the victim drove to the corner of Evergreen and McCullough to call 911. The victim, that boyfriend, treated and later taken to Bamsey at last check in stable condition. Right now, police still searching, still investigating, trying to figure out what exactly happened. In your morning headlines, Texans receiving unemployment can expect an extra $300 a week as early as tomorrow. The additional benefits will be on their first payment request on or after today. These funds will also be retroactive to the benefit week ending August 1st. The Lost Wages program is part of an executive action signed by President Donald Trump that pushed Congress in an effort to provide financial relief to those who are still out of work amid the coronavirus pandemic. 
And the House passing a bill to reverse the changes blamed for the USPS delays. The measure would also send $25 billion in emergency funds to shore up the United States Postal Service ahead of this November's election. President Donald Trump, though, urging a no vote, calling concerns over mail delivery a hoax. And the White House says he will vote veto the bill if it passes the Senate. More than two dozen Republicans broke with the president and backed the legislation in the House. Now to the desperate battle against some of the largest wildfires in California's history. More than a million acres have been burned. Tens of thousands of people forced out of their homes. ABC's Kaylee Hartong has the story from Northern California. This morning, dramatic new images. Homes engulfed in flames. As two of the largest fires in California's recorded history burn more than a million acres across the state. Homes and cars charred. Another round of lightning strikes expected today, ramping up the danger for firefighters. Nearly 12,000 strikes in the past week, responsible for sparking hundreds of fires. We do have some incoming weather that is very concerning to us. Hot spots like these are a real concern. This heat is extreme. The smoke is incredibly thick. Crews working to put them out before the weather here gets worse. More than 13,000 firefighters responding across the state as two dozen major fires pull crews in all directions. The erratic winds, the steep terrain, the heavy fuel, uh, the trees that are falling, uh, that's one of the, the biggest hazards out here. New rescue video showing harrowing conditions for those on the front lines. All right, guys, I'm going to get you out of here, okay? A sheriff's helicopter saving two firefighters trapped north of San Francisco. Straight up. Using a 100-foot-long line to reach them, flames just 75 yards away. Thick smoke blanketing most of Northern California. And this view from the sky showing just how vast these fires are. More than 100,000 evacuated. People like Naomi Sakumbi fearing they'll come home to nothing. The ground is still hot. So you have to be patient. It's the worst waiting game possible. And that was ABC's Kaylee Hartung reporting. And now TikTok says it will fight the Trump administration in court over an executive order that has banned its operation in the U.S. The company says it could begin legal action this coming week. That's unless an American business buys the platform. TikTok says it has tried to negotiate with the Trump administration, but encountered what it calls a lack of due process. The White House has argued the company could be a security risk. And I know a lot of friends who work in corporate America, they have been mandated to delete it from their phone because of the possible security risks. Ooh, TikTok. I know. Future. 837, 71 degrees out. Oh, a new trailer has been released. Ooh. Revealing an impressive cast of bad guys and gals just ahead who will be starring in the Suicide Squad. Actually, it looks really good. Will Smith killed it in the last one. And Russell Crowe playing a rather scary individual in a new movie called Unhinged. We're gonna hear what he has to say about the role. First, let's take a look outside with live cam, 71 degrees. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, so if you're up and about, make sure you definitely take advantage of it because Sarah Spivey is saying later this week, the temperature looks like it's going to be heating up. We'll be back. Democrats held nothing back, and now it's his turn. How will Donald Trump and the Republicans respond? Now, today, the president's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, on Trump's re-election pitch to the nation, and the powerhouse roundtable pulls no punches. Today on ABC's This Week with George. Welcome back. If you're a fan of Russell Crowe, he has a new movie coming out, which finds him playing rather a scary guy. That's right. Rick Damagella talked with Russell Crowe about the new movie called Unhinged. Well, that's where we are in this world today. We seem to have developed a fundamental inability to apologize to anyone for anything. Russell Crowe plays a dangerously deranged man triggered by a road rage incident in the thriller Unhinged. With this movie, with all the tension that's on screen, the actual set energy was really chilled and really just purposeful and so it's funny how that can happen sometimes you know i don't even think you really know what a bad day is but you're gonna find out when you're playing a character so devoid of humanity where you cannot access the things that you would normally access in your job um it make it does make it more difficult you know 
having a kind of a hard time lately. I'm sorry. His detachment, his failure in certain areas, you know, have drained him of that humanity that we all rely on when communicating with people and stuff. And so, yeah, it was it was a, a tricky character from that point of view. Karen Pistorius, who plays the target of the unhinged man, also found the production challenging. We were filming, um, you know, just before the hurricane season. So you probably know it's, it gets just crazy sweltering hot. And um, we were stuck in this little old, well, you know, vintage uh, Volvo. And so then, you know, that mixed with the climate, mixed with the sort of heavy breathing day, day in and day out um, was really intense. What do you want? I need you to learn what a bad day really is. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, unhinged release date has been changed several times and it was slated to open this week, but the studio has delayed its opening until late August. And also in Hollywood, villains galore Warner Brothers releasing a teaser trailer unveiling an impressive cast of bad guys and bad girls that will be featured in a new film, The Suicide Squad. I guess this would be the sequel. Now, the film set to be released in August of a year from now in 2021. It's going to be the sequel, like I said, to Suicide Squad. It's going to be focused on one of DC's most popular villains, Harley Quinn. Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn, reprising her role uh, alongside Viola Davis, among other notable additions, Idris Elba, love him, Pete Davidson, okay, John Cena, whoa. I love him. He's great in movies. That's a great cast. I'm excited for that one. I, I hope they bring back Will Smith. <laughs> Good luck. And the Wonder Woman 1984 trailer has been released. There's a lot of hype about this one. The mm. film's stars and director revealed it at a DC fandom virtual convention on Saturday. It features Gal Gadot, Kristen Wiig, Pedro Pascal, and Chris Pine. One of the villains can make wishes come mm. true. So Wonder Woman's lost love appears to be back. All right, are you guys superhero fans? DC, Marvel? I yes. like the I like the Marvel movies. Mm. Not really DC, but I think Wonder Woman was pretty good. See, I, I think I'm more like DC just because I, I think I like the darker view of it. I mean, yeah. Ooh, Max, Justice. Max is so dark. No, well, I like how they did it with Batman. And one thing we didn't mention, Robert Pattinson's Batman, they released a trailer on that too. Pretty neat. Boom. I actually saw a picture of Gal Gadot and Brie Larson together, Captain Marvel mm. and DC Comics, Wonder Woman. Ooh. So, you know what? There's room for everybody, I think. <laughs> and you know what? We got some good rain yesterday in some places. Let's look at yesterday's high temperatures. 90 degrees was the high temperature in San Antonio. That is the first time for the entire month that we've been below average for our high temperatures. And it was all because of the rain. Even some spots like Gonzales and Pleasanton did not get out of the 80s. Here's a look at that rainfall from yesterday morning. Uh, more than half an inch out in Bernie. Uh, 37 hundredths of an inch at the airport officially. Uh, meanwhile, Gonzalez, an inch and a half. Guadalupe River, an inch and a half down there in Carnes in uh, DeWitt County. Uh, and near Canyon Lake, about an inch of rainfall as well. About an inch plus out at Bulverde and just about everybody east of I-10 and I-35 saw a decent amount of rain. And just about everybody around San Antonio saw some rain yesterday morning. This was all good for the aquifer. A lot of this fell along the uh, Edwards Aquifer Recharge Zone. That's why we've seen the aquifer go up by about a foot since uh, 24 hours ago. So very nice news there. Right now outside, it feels great. Also a result of the rain, uh, we were able to see temperatures cool down. This morning we got up to, we got down to 69 degrees, which is the coolest we've been since June 14th. Right now it is 71, so we are warming up. Uh, dew points are comfortable. It is a little muggy out there, but we'll be able to see dew points fall into the 50s by this afternoon. Here's a quick check of temperatures. It's still in the 60s up at Bernie Stage Airfield, 64 in Comfort, 69 in Bandera, uh, and 69 in Kerrville, 76 in Del Rio, a little warm spot out toward Del Rio, 74 in Catula, and 73 in Carrizo Springs. Showing you the future cast here because it's going to be a really sunny day. However, in the afternoon, there could be one or two uh, stray showers that make it from the coast up to the I-35 corridor. Today's chance for rain is honestly only about 10%. So most of us are going to miss out on the rain totally today. So I hope you got some good rain yesterday. The high temperatures, however, should be...
should be fairly comfortable. High temperatures in the low to mid 90s uh, all around Bear County could only be up to 92 up at Bernie 93 in Leon Springs. What's more is humidity should stay low, so it should be a pre pretty pleasant summer day considering that it can get pretty hot and humid here this time of year. 80 at 10, 88 at noon, 94 for the afternoon high east winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Let's go ahead and break down the tropics. Talk about the tropics, the two systems there. Uh, we've got Tropical Storm Marco on the verge of becoming a hurricane, strengthening to hurricane status here probably if not by lunch, then definitely by the afternoon. Uh, and it's in the southeastern portion of the Gulf with wind sustained at about 70 miles per hour. Meanwhile, tropical storm Laura, still a tropical storm, but it's got a lot of real estate to cover, so it's going to strengthen into a hurricane as well. Now, earlier yesterday, it was looking like Marco could potentially make landfall anywhere along the Texas to Louisiana coast, but things have become a lot clearer when it comes to the path of Marco. Marco is likely going to impact the Louisiana coast, making landfall as a category one hurricane as early as tomorrow afternoon. That's why there are hurricane warnings for areas around New Orleans. And then Marco will continue to fall apart over land. We'll be on the dry side of that system, so no rain expected from Marco here in San Antonio. Laura, a little bit uh, more uncertain about where it's going to make landfall. Looks like it could make landfall as a Category 2 hurricane anywhere from Houston out to Louisiana. That would be pretty bad for the Louisiana coast to get a hurricane on Monday afternoon and then by Wednesday night getting another hurricane. That would be bad for them. Uh, and honestly, either way, we're not going to see much, if anything, from Laura as well, because we'll be on the west or the dry side of that storm. So it's going to be a hot and fairly dry week. The only chance of rain is isolated on Wednesday and Thursday, and that's if Laura is closer to Houston than it is to Louisiana coast. So we'll probably refine that forecast as we get closer to it. But tropics starting to become a little bit more clear what's going to happen there. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 849, 71 degrees out. We continue to bring, the, bring you the latest information you need to know as kids start the new school year tomorrow on GMSA. We will hear how Somerset teachers are preparing for their first day and what parents can expect. In the news you need to know before you go, a series of crashes ends with three women in the hospital, one of which had to be rescued from a vehicle using the jaws of life. This was a situation just before 1 a.m. near I-10 in Ackerman. A woman pinned to one of those vehicles remains in critical condition this morning. Two others taken to Northeast Baptist in stable condition. Investigators say the driver responsible for pinning that one victim being checked for a DWI. And before we end this morning, we want to share some good news with you. We love good news. One essential worker says all of your thank yous matter. Terrell Hagler from Philadelphia says he starts his mornings every day at 530 as a garbage man. And since the pandemic began, he's been posting videos online. He has documented the kindness from all the families along his routes, the donations, the cold drinks and the waters, all of those acts of kindness, large and small. Now, Terrell is raising money for his fellow workers who have been working overtime and for those who have been battling this virus. I just saw uh, an opportunity for, for me to do something for my coworkers to help raise awareness and to buy proper PPE and cleaning supplies for the trucks to make sure that me and my coworkers stay safe. So far, he's been able to raise more than $26,000. Wow. He went on to share a final message to all the people who have been kind to him, saying, your voice matters, so keep the hope strong, keep the fire burning, and keep fighting for what you want, because one day it will be listened to. He had his own t-shirt. That was cool. That is cool. <laughs> and look at this beautiful shot of downtown San Antonio illuminated by the sun. It is 78 degrees outside. We have already seen a nine degree temperature jumps. Whoa. Since the sun rose, so it was nice and it's getting warmer and it's going to be warm this afternoon. 94 degrees, but it's a lot better than the, <laughs> the uh, most of August where we've been up to 100 just about every day. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And yeah, coastal shower storm could develop. Now, we'll be watching the tropics, but it still looks like it's going to be dry here in San Antonio. High temperatures climbing to 100 degrees. So it's going to be hot this week. And All then right. it gets better, right? 
after that <laughs> fall. In fall, it'll be better. Fall. And then pumpkin spice lattes, and There right? you go. <laughs> and pumpkin spice lattes. All right, well, thank you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Have a good Sunday. The Max and the Sarah. Sarah <laughs> squared. Bye, guys.